What's up guys, the Panthers here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. A uh, couple of things to talk about today, of course the title is probably going to be something like um, New Foot Records or something like that and the reason why that came about is because in today's video during one point in a game I scored two goals one in like the official I think 12th minute and one in the 13th minute. I've never ever scored against uh, an actual opponent two goals like minute after minute because of how long it takes like the kickoff to steal the ball back and then to go and score it's actually very difficult so I think that might be a record and it inspired some conversation for today's video um first thing I want to talk about is the difference between myself and Nick 28T um, because it's something that gets mentioned uh, in the comment sections a whole bunch now first things first I absolutely love Nick and I think poor man's road to glory is a brilliant brilliant series it's one of the only things that I actually watch on YouTube um um, for me personally, I love Road to Glories. I love gameplay series. I love uh, long-winded things. I love watching someone start with literally nothing, invest nothing but time, and then end up with something epic. And that's what Nick has in his poor man's Road to Glory. I like the series a lot. I usually don't actually watch the videos. I'm usually watching his streams when he's recording it. Um, but I always get people in the comment section say... Nick's, Nick does this and Nick does that. I'm I'm not Nick. Like I'm not a squad building channel. What Nick typically does in his poor man's road to glory is build a whole bunch of squads. Uh, you, you know, unique squads. He uses a lot of legends. He buys a team. He'll play a few games with it and then he'll sell the whole thing. That's not me. Me personally, I like to have records on players. I like to, like my, my, my aims and my goals are to score like X amount of goals with a player or play X amount of games with a player, not hey, let's buy a team, play with it, move it on, and then try new players. That's not to say that I don't like trying new players because I really do enjoy trying new players. And we've been through a hell of a lot of teams throughout this series. But I like to have that one go-to team, which is what you're looking at on the screen right now. And I was considering uh, also what you're looking at on the screen right now, changing some things up. Somebody said to me, try selling Matuidi, get Gonalons in, and then play, uh, you know, like change up the, the defense or something. And it's possible that I could do that. The problem is, if I sold Matuidi and used Gonalons, Gonalons would have to be on seven chemistry. Um, it just wouldn't work. Or, or, or I would, like I would have to change my defense and then go and get Thiago Silva and Aurier. But then Thiago Silva would be on seven chemistry. And there's not a goalkeeper that I would want to use that would also link with Boateng. So I'd have to sacrifice someone and put someone on 7 chemistry. Which isn't a problem. I'm alright playing people on 7 chem. But when you look at how good uh, Matuidi is compared to Gonalons, Downgrading from a, a, a 10 chem Matuidi to a 7 chem Gonalons just to change potentially a center back it's not worth it for me i'd rather uh, i'd rather have uh, have the team that i've got now but so again i just want to like reiterate this is not nick's poor man's road to glory this is my idea of how to play ultimate team and what to do nick does what his mind set you know his mind's eye says this is where he wants to go and he does that that's how he has fun with fifa and if you guys love that that's great but for me personally, this is how I have fun with FIFA. I have fun with FIFA by sticking with the same team for a considerable number of games and, and finding what works. And what you'll find is Nick loses a lot of games. Nick's an emotional player anyway, very much like myself. And he gets angry at the smallest things, very much like myself. But one of Nick's biggest problems is, and this isn't a, a big problem in like the greater scheme of worldwide things, but in terms of FIFA... Um, Nick will lose a lot more games than he should because he's a very, very good player. But because he uses players that he's never used before and formations that he's never used before, he slips up where he shouldn't at many, many occasions. I know these formations and these players inside out and I've played so many games with them. I know where they're going to be, when they're going to be there, how they're going to be, how they typically react with the ball. Uh, you know how like I know you know I know the strengths and weaknesses of every single player inside out, but it allows me to win convincingly more games. Um, and again, that's just my mind's eye of way of how to play this game. You know, you don't have to agree with me, and if you don't agree with me, that's totally fine. I'm I'm not here suggesting everyone should play like this. I'm here saying this is how I play. If you like it, do it. If you don't, that's that's totally okay. You know, it's, it's not the end of the world. Everyone has their own ideas on how to play and what to do. Some people obviously spend money. Um, some people buy coins. Some people don't can't afford to buy coins or spend money, and so instead they just uh, they just play it like this. And as I say, one more time, like this this for me is how I play the game. Um, and 
it's, it's not a squad building series. It's a road to glory series. And, you know, we're, we, we build a lot of teams because of what EA have done with these uh, tournaments, like every second or third day. We're building like a whole bunch of teams all the time. Yeah, okay, I'm not selling everything I've got and then building some super team, but as, a, as I've proven over and over and over again, I don't need to build super teams to win. We win the tournaments with, like, basic teams, with no informs, no special cards, just gold, low-rated cards, and we're winning over and over and over. So what's the point of me selling what I've got, losing the tax, buying a whole bunch more players for a heightened price because they're there for a tournament and then selling them and losing a profit on them as well there's no point that's that's a that's a quick way to lose all your coins and that's one of the reasons why so many people struggle with their coin management this year is because they buy and sell willy-nilly instead of learning the team one of the things that uh that kind of like was awesome for me when watching nick's poor man rosary was his um his love affair with hakan chalanoglu and I probably pronounced his name wrong there and I apologise, but when Nick started using him, he loved him. So he started putting him in every single team and his record with him as a centre midfielder was insane. It was, like, it was like a goal and two assists per game over like a 10 game period. It was absolutely incredible. And that's why when I find something that works for me, I don't change from it because he's got that hack in now and it works so well for him that to change that would be ludicrous because he might put... You know, he might go and get himself an incredible... He might go and get himself team of the season Ben Arthur and play him for a few games and find that he's absolutely shocking, you know? Um, but anyway, so this is the game right here that you're watching now that I broke... In my, I think I broke a record in. Uh, we picked the ball up with Royce. This is a Division 1 game, guys. This is a Division 1 game. We score a goal early on. We get the ball here with Angel Di Maria. He takes a shot. He scores a goal. It's 2-0. That's the 11th minute. Um, you know, 10 minutes, 30 seconds in, like, it's considered the 11th minute because 0 to 59 is the first minute, uh, 1 minute uh, to 1 minute 59 is the second minute, etc, etc. So we score that in the 11th minute. My opponent then kicks off. His name is Petter Check Your Pants. Just banter. It's just banter. Uh, my opponent kicks off. I steal the ball with Aubameyang. And because of how godly Aubameyang is, he runs through the whole team and then hits a left foot finesse. And pops that in the back of the net on 11.59, probably like 11.59.99. Because it, to me, it looked like it said 12 when it scored it. But when after I showed the replay again, and I watched the replay just because of how damn good that finesse shot was. He like kind of drives it and finesses it at the same time. And there you can see it. 7, 11 and 12. This is a Division 1 game. I actually messaged my opponent after this game asking him what division he was in. And he was in Division 2, um, which is a bit silly. Like, I, I don't know. EA should, like, in real life, if you're in a championship and you win 10, 15 games in a row, you still got to play championship teams. Like, you don't all of a sudden start playing premiership teams because your ELO is that high. And the same in the premiership that if you're getting battered game after game after game, you don't then start playing championship teams to help your point score. You you play premiership teams still and you've just got to deal with it, right? So like I think EA should implement something where you only play the people that you play in your division. But this was a I'm five and up after twenty minutes against this guy. I kinda of felt bad. I honestly thought for a few times a few times I kept having to look at the top left and making sure it was still in seasons. Because I thought, oh maybe I entered a cup game by mistake. No, it is a seasons game, it's a division game. And when I scored those two goals, it posed something in my mind and something that I've talked about years ago and probably a few times over the years. But something that I, I would love to see EA put into the game that they, they just don't. And uh, like, so I hear it's due to kind of like server storage issues. And we already know that EA servers are temperamental at best. Um, and I, I don't understand necessarily how data storage works and how some games can do it. You know, like when you look at Diablo, Diablo has like mammoth amounts of information and thousands, hundreds of thousands of players on it all the time. And yet they have no problem with data storage apart from um, something like chest space. So where you actually store your items, uh, they have issues with that. But in general, like, you know, they have just copious amounts of data. But it made me wonder why we can't have... Um, records in ultimate team biggest win biggest loss quickest goal you know biggest winning margin most goals scored most goals conceded most ever goals scored for a player like if let's say you get an Aubameyang in day one and you score like 79 goals with him then he gets an inform so you sell that one and you buy the inform it should give you most ever goals Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang 79 and then you know now if you score 80 with the player it's going to break the record of your most goals most assists most clean sheets just 
if you've ever played Football Manager or Championship Manager of old, all the records that they would have, biggest win streak, biggest loss streak, um, you can't have like attendance things or like, you know, you, can't, you, you could do like um, most expensive transfer. So if anyone ever said, yo, what's the most you've ever spent on like one player? You could be like, oh, let me go check my records. Okay, I spent, you know, 3.5 million on Cristiano Ronaldo. I personally, I think I spent 3.9 million on Luis Suarez and then I packed him. Um, but I don't, I can't remember exactly, but it would be great if there was something that told me this is, this was your biggest transfer, highest rated pack pool, highest rated draft records. I would love to see records. And I understand that EA say we can't do this for data storage reasons. Okay. That's fine. How can football manager do it? Football manager do it because it's all marked offline. So, and I say offline, not in the sense of like no internet connection or whatever, but football manager is like, um, it's not it's not server stored it's like it's it's stuff stored in the files within your own computer ea can't really do that because when they do that because this is a competitive online head-to-head -head game people will just modify those files to cheat and lie and although it won't necessarily mean anything if there was a leaderboard for it or if there was a reward for something or you know if there was anything um that could have could be potentially manipulated to farm coins or anything like that through it it would be so, so easy to change. Uh, so that's why they don't do that. But anyway, we're into the semi-final of the um, It Begins tournament. And uh, I, I would have I would been heartbroken if I didn't win that game because I dominated that guy the whole game. I scored the goal late on thinking, yes, that's it. Done, done deal. He equalized like straight away. But I fortunately got back into the lead pretty early on. As you can see there, he only had two shots the whole game. And one of them was like in the 88th minute. Um, so I was happy to get the, uh, get the win there. And uh, you can see now we're into the final. Now, I've got low fitness on a few of my players. I think my Phil Walcott had 88%, but I thought, let me risk it. Um, we've been talking in the comment section a few times about, uh, I've seen a few of you guys discuss how low you let your fitness go. And some of you guys let your, your, the fitness of your players get down to like 75 or 80 before it's, you know, too low. And I may be starting to open my eyes to that a little bit more as well, because... I'm always of the, you know, when, when my players end the game, other than players who have like really low stamina issues, my players like, they're always like finish with like loads and loads of stamina and fitness. And I think if using substitutes properly, which I didn't do in this tournament because I just had a really, I had an untradeable bench of re, like really bad players in the team. Um, if using subs properly, like my Theo Walcott now with 88% fitness, if I started Theo Walcott with 82% fitness, and around the 60th, 65th minute, I was like, okay, you know, he's not having that impact anymore. I could just sub him out. Boom. I get an extra game without having to use a fitness team. And it definitely kind of made me think, okay, I, w I probably wouldn't let it go down into the mid-70s like some of you guys seem to do. And I understand why you do it because you can't afford fitness cards and you can't bother to use fitness teams. I, I get that. But I would definitely be more interested. Usually I get it down to like 93 or 92%. I'm like, yo, whoa, we've got, got, to, uh, got to reset, got to, uh, got to go and get the fitness back on these boys. But that's entirely unnecessary. However, because I have a really good first club, first team, and a strong fitness team, it doesn't really bother me to play a couple of Division One games with my main team and then a, season, um, a, a cup game with my second team and then go and play another couple of Division One games with my main team and a, and a cup game with my second team because it's just that good. Now, I end up scoring uh, a winner in the 105th minute and I was shushing this guy because as I showed you, I believe, after his second goal, when he scored, he was watching all the replays like waiting for the the walk back to the field and, and waiting until the referee blew the whistle to kick off. And it, it was kind of winding me up a little bit. So when I finally got ahead and I feel like I deserve to be ahead, um, I was uh, I was very happy. So I ran around shushing him, hoping to uh, inflict anger in him because the fact that he does that to me makes me think that he think you know he thinks mind games work, which means me doing it to him would also wind him up. It did wind me up a little bit. I usually don't let stuff like that bother me. But because we went out in like, you know, we lost in the last tournament in this uh, quarterfinal and um, I battered the guy and just lost. I was really frustrated and I was playing on tilt a little bit, even after the semi-final here when I scored a 90th minute winner and then to equalize late on in the final here, I was, I was playing on tilt. I was very frustrated and heated when I was playing, but I won the tournament. We get our 5,000 coins. You can see my, uh, my formation there right at the end. I had five at the back and put my two DMs deep. And just had three attackers. But we got the five uh, 5,000 coins. More importantly, we got the BPL Prime Players Pack. And literally, guys, as you, you'll see me open a pack. But as I pressed X or A to open this pack, I was like, no. I should have saved it. 
I should have saved it because the Premiership has started again, which means BPL informs are going to be coming back. Zlatan scored. We could potentially see a Zlatan inform. Um, Bailey, the guy for Man United, the centre-back, got man of the match in that game. We could potentially see an inform for him. Coutinho played amazing for Liverpool. We could essentially see an, a better version of Coutinho. And, and I was like, and, and sorry, was it Coutinho? Not Coutinho. Yeah, no, it was Coutinho. And we actually packed Oscar in this pack, which is pretty damn awesome. But... Like, there's so many potential incredible players and there's still the West Ham-Chelsea game to go where we could have had, like, you know, I could have had much better option. If I'd have saved it, it would have been logical and I didn't, which was uh, a little bit annoying. But the fact that they added a BPL Prime Players Pack as a pack reward means that, A, throughout the rest of FIFA 16, you're, we're likely now to see a La Liga Prime Player Pack tournament, a City Up Prime Player Pack tournament, etc., etc. But it also means that, like they're putting the the new packs in as tournament rewards and it also means that hopefully for fifa 17 they'll start off with more of this stuff it's like they're list i don't want to say they're listening to me because i don't believe i have that much influence over ea but i have been calling quite a few times for um you know new rewards and more rewards but untradeable rewards because it doesn't affect anyone and it doesn't affect the market out of all the untradeable players I've got, and I've got quite a few of them, I only use one or two of them. Okay, now I use footies, Royce footies or Bamian quite a lot. But in general, people, even if they get a really good untradeable player, unless they want to build a whole team around that person and just that specific person, they're still going to go out there and spend FIFA points and buy packs to accumulate coins to do things with. Because an untradeable player doesn't mean anything. It doesn't do anything. Like, I've got that Oscar in the club now. Yes, he's a good player. It would have cost me 2,000 coins to go to the market and buy him. But I'm probably never going to use him. Or I'll only ever use him when a tournament comes about that he'll fit the narrative of my team for. So that untradeable pack hasn't necessarily deterred me from buying more packs. If I was somebody who spent money on the game, and I am somebody who spends money on the game on my main account, if I'd have won that game, uh, I wouldn't have been sitting here being like, oh, okay, so I won that game. Uh, sorry, won that pack. I'm never going to spend feed points again because I've just got an untradeable Oscar and a whole bunch of crap. Like... That's not how it works. I'm going to win that tournament, get the 5,000 coins, get the untradeable pack, and then think, damn, that wasn't bad. Oh, there's some BPL Prime players in st packs in store as well. Let me try a few more to see if I can get another few, you know, few good BPL players, build up a BPL team. Like, EA, EA think that like giving away things for free will have a negative influence on their, their kind of, I guess, monetary value. But it won't. Not in my opinion. Not personally anyway. I think the more freebies they give away, the more people get onto their game. The more people get onto their game, the more likely those people are of spending money. Hence, more money for EA. For me, that just makes sense. But anyway, we are drawing to a close in this video now. Um, as you can see on the screen, uh, we're selling... Um, all of these players that we bought. I've listed them all up for a heightened price. There is still a day and a half left on the BPL tournament at the time of recording this. Um, so if they don't sell, I'll reduce them a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. But also, um, I was doing the bronze pack method and uh, I packed another epic inform. We've already packed him once and I packed him again and I think there was only one of him or maybe even none of him on the market when I packed him, but I packed Loy again. Um, which is great because we sold him for, I think, 15,000 coins the first time. And this time, there's none of him on the market. So I listed him up for a reasonable price again. But that, guys, is going to be the end of the video. So if you did enjoy this, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.